everyone, it's me Shandy and you're watching Biology Nowadays. In this video, we will discuss about permanent tissues, mainly the simple permanent tissues which include parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. In the previous lecture, we learned that based on whether the cells in the tissues are capable of dividing or not, Tissues are classified into two main groups. The first one is the meristematic tissues, which consist of young, actively dividing cells. They divide and redivide continuously and form new cells. But as the cell division proceeds, some of the older cells lose their capacity for cell division and get matured. These groups of cells form the permanent tissues. They are also called mature tissues. They do not generally divide further. While meristematic tissues are found only at the growing regions of a plant, the permanent tissues make up the bulk of the plant body. In the case of a tree, there are woody parts like the woody stem, older roots, etc. Then not so woody parts like young stems, petioles and midbrae bob leaves. And also very soft regions like flowers, pulp of fruits, etc. These different regions are made up of different kinds of permanent tissues, having different functions. Let's get into more details about the permanent tissues. After they lose their ability to divide, permanent tissues get differentiated, or in other words, become specialized. The cells of the permanent tissues have definite shape, size and functions. They may be living or dead cells. They may have thin or thick cell walls. Based on whether the cells in the tissues are similar in structure or not, permanent tissues are divided into two main groups. Simple permanent tissues or simple tissues which consist of only one type of cells and complex permanent tissues or complex tissues consisting of two or more types of cells. Let's see about simple tissues in detail. As I just mentioned, simple tissues are composed of only one type of cells. Here the cells are similar in structure and function. There are mainly three types of simple tissues. Parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. But before we get into these tissues in detail, let me clear some terminologies used in anatomy. Do you know what a cross-section is? Let us learn about two common kinds of cross-sections. First of all, consider a plant organ, for example, a stem, and this line at the central axis of the stem. When we slice in any plane perpendicular to the central axis of the stem, we will get a transverse cross-section. But if we cut the stem by any vertical plane passing through the central axis, we will get a longitudinal cross-section. But in botany, when you see the term cross-section, short form CS, it actually refers to the transverse section and longitudinal cross-sections are referred to as longitudinal sections or LS. In anatomy, it is important to analyze both transverse or let's say cross-sections as well as longitudinal sections. I will explain that with an example. Let's imagine two persons having no idea about the shape or size of a cucumber. The first person saw a longitudinal section of the cucumber and from that he imagined that cucumber might be like a broad bean. The second person happened to see the transverse section and he imagined that cucumber is spherical like an orange. But we know that both of them are wrong. By looking at the longitudinal section alone, the first person got only a partial insight about the cucumber. Looking at the transverse section alone, the second person also got only a partial insight. But when we show them both sections, that is transverse as well as longitudinal sections, then they can understand that cucumber looks like this. Similar is the case with cells. Cells are of different shapes. Some of them have the shape of an orange, some others may have the shape of a cucumber, and so on. Unless we have both the transverse and longitudinal sections, 
we cannot have a full insight about the shape and size of cells. Okay, so let's start with the first type of simple permanent tissue, the parenchyma tissue. The cells in the parenchyma tissue are isodiametric, which means roughly spherical or polyhedral. In a transverse section or cross section, they may be circular, oval or polygonal in shape. Sometimes you can see that they are elongated in this cross section. Here is the longitudinal section of parenchyma cells. See the length of these cells. Parenchyma cells have thin cell walls made up of cellulose. Mostly intercellular spaces or spaces between the cells are seen in parenchyma tissue. But sometimes the cells are seen closely packed. Parenchyma cells are living cells and contain dense protoplasm. Protoplasm refers to cytoplasm plus the cell organelles. The parenchyma cells have a distinct nucleus and a large central vacuole. They are the most abundant tissue found in plants. Now, where are they found in plants? They form the fundamental or ground tissue in the non-woody or soft areas of the stems, roots, leaves, flowers and fruits. What do they do in these plant parts? One of the main functions of parenchyma cells is storage of food materials. Parenchyma cells which store large quantities of food are called storage parenchyma. For example, parenchyma of root tubers and stem tubers. This picture shows parenchyma cells with starch grains found in the potato tuber. Parenchyma tissue containing chloroplasts are called chlorenchyma. They conduct photosynthesis. And can you tell me where can you see the chlorenchyma? Yes, you guessed it right. They are seen in the photosynthetic organs or leaves. Chlorenchyma consists of palisade and spongy parenchyma. Palisade and spongy parenchyma together have a special name. If anyone knows that name, then type it right now in the comment box below. Aquatic plants have a special kind of parenchyma tissue called aerenchyma. Aerenchyma have air spaces in between. These air spaces help in the internal circulation of air. They also give buoyancy to the plant. Specialized secretory parenchyma cells are found lining the resin ducts and other secretory structures. Finally, by maintaining the turgidity of cells, parenchyma cells give rigidity to plant organs. Now let's see what cholenchyma tissue is. The cells of cholenchyma tissue are also living cells which have depositions of cellulose, hemicellulose and pectin only at the corners of the cells. In this picture, can you see the difference between a parenchyma cell and a cholenchyma cell? The parenchyma cells have thin walls. The thickenings of the cholenchyma cells are shown here in yellow. Among the parenchyma cells, you can see the intercellular spaces. Cholenchyma is derived from the Greek word chola, meaning glue, which refers to their characteristic thick shiny walls seen in a fresh tissue. Since they have thickened cell walls at corners, their primary function is to give mechanical support. They actually have thin cell walls but are thickened only at the corners and because of the thickening, there are no intercellular spaces in cholenchyma. In the cross section, the cholenchyma cells may be circular, oval or polygonal. If we check the longitudinal section, then we can see that they are elongated cells. They are present below the epidermis in dicot stems and in the petiole and midrib of dicot leaves. They are absent in monocots. The reason is that most of the monocots develop sclerenchyma tissues in their early stages of development. Sclerenchyma provides more mechanical support than cholenchyma. So there is no need of cholenchyma tissue in monocots. Cholenchyma is the living mechanical tissue found in young dicot stems, petioles and midrib of dicot leaves. Since they have thick 
cell walls only at the corners, chlorochyma cells are flexible and so they can resist bending and stretching caused by winds. They also allow growth of the plant organs in which they are present. Sometimes they contain chlorophyll and perform photosynthesis. Finally, the sclerenchyma tissue. The term sclerenchyma is derived from the Greek word skleros, meaning heart. And the main characteristic of sclerenchyma cells is their thick cell walls. Sclerenchyma tissue consists of thick walled dead cells. Dead cells. Hmm, that's interesting, right? It means that the protoplasm or the living content of the cell is absent in sclerenchyma cells. So, the cell cavity or lumen is usually empty. You can be happy about this because since there is no protoplasm, sclerenchyma has no much functions except one important function. And what's that? Being thick-walled, it gives mechanical support to plant organs. It is the chief mechanical tissue in plants. It gives protection to the plant body from various adverse physical conditions. You may remember that the cell wall thickening at the corners of cells in the cholenchyma is due to deposition of cellulose, hemicellulose and pectins. But the cell wall thickening of sclerenchyma cells is mainly due to the deposition of lignin. Lignin is uniformly deposited all over the sclerenchyma cell walls. Because of the thick cell walls, sclerenchyma cells have narrow lumen. Here in this picture, you can see that the size of lumen or cell cavity of sclerenchyma cells is much smaller than that of the parenchyma cells. Based on the shape, sclerenchyma tissues are classified into two types, namely fibers and sclerites. Fibers are elongated and sclerites are not so elongated sclerenchyma cells. Let's see the differences. Fibers are elongated cells with tapering ends. They occur in bundles. Fibers being strong and flexible are used in the manufacture of ropes and textiles. Jute and coir are obtained from thick bundles of fibers. Sclerites are extremely thick wall cells. They are also called stone cells. They are non-elongated when compared to fibers. Sclerites are of varying shapes. Some of them are even branched. Because of the extremely thickened cell walls, they have very narrow cavities or lumen than the fibers. Sclerites are brittle, not flexible. And so, they cannot be spun like fibers. Sclerites may occur singly or in aggregates throughout the ground tissue. If you have eaten fruits like guava, pear or sapota, you might have noted that the fruit pulp is not so smooth or it is gritty. Actually, this grittiness in the fruit pulp of these fruits is due to the presence of sclerites. Sclerites are also found in the shells of nuts and seed coats of legumes. And that's all for this video. Thank you for being with me and stay tuned.